I'm Dan Johnson talking to Bill Canino of Sport Air USA, who is the importer of this airplane. But tell me what this airplane is, Bill. Well, Dan, we've had a lot of success with the shock cub and the heavy Titan engine and 180 horsepower, and all that's great. But in reality, we're a light plane manufacturing business, and so we went back to the drawing boards and asked the factory, why is it we can't take something that uh, Rotex driven and save several hundred pounds and still get really good performance? So the factory responded with what they consider is an ultra performer. It can actually land a little slower because there's less mass than the big shock cub, and so we call it a shock ultra. It's an ultra performing. An ultra shock. Yes. <laughs> so that explains that name there. Now, we love the Titan engine that's doing a great job of lifting lots of people in the air. We've flown together in your Outback with the uh, Outback shock with mm -hmm. the big Titan engine on it. And it, it's, it's marvelous. It's a it's great engine. Great honking power. It does use more fuel. It does weigh some more. How much more, what savings, in other words, can this Ultra get compared to the Outback shock with the Titan 180 horse engine? Over uh, 200 pounds. Uh, sometimes I think of it as 300, but it's, you have to take into account that a lot of things with the, not just the weight of the engine, but the size of some of the tubing can change uh -huh. because impacts of a heavy engine aren't there. It's a lighter engine to begin with. Basically, we feel like the, the shock part of keeping the shocks, uh, the side shocks, and keeping the impact down really made the whole thing lighter over 200 pounds, I'll say. More than 200 pounds less than the, than the, than than the, the shock Outback shock with, with the, the Titan, Titan 180 yes. on it. Okay, that's all, in, in, air, in air, lightweight airplanes, that's a huge amount of savings. It's like a passenger that you don't have. Yeah, and okay, so you got less, how much power you got now? 115 horsepower in the turbo engine and 100 for the normal aspirated Okay, engine. and you can get it either way? Either way, Okay, yeah. so let's take the 100 horsepower one, 80 horsepower less but more than 200 pounds less. How do they compare in performance? Well, the, 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 the less mass allows you, and the less weight allows you to stall slower. For example, solo with about half fuel, this plane stalls at about 18 miles an hour. I mean, it's just a very gentle <laughs> now, bobbing it's, it's got all the accoutrements on it here that help it do that, but still, 18 miles an hour? I could almost walk that fast. Well, in my mind, anyway. But. That's not very fast. No, and, and technically at full gross, it's about 25. So both of those are very low numbers. Wow, very, very low. They're low enough that you don't have a lot of airflow and you really need good dynamic equipment to be able to handle what you do have. Yeah. So is the airplane essentially the same airframe? I mean, other than that weight and the fact that you could even reduce some tubing sizes, I imagine that reference has to do with the engine mounts. It's, it's up in this area for okay. really for impact and crash resistance. But yeah, big heavy engine that far forward, yeah. got to have more but structure. But the fuselage is basically the, the Nomad fuselage with all the shock uh, accoutrements to the slats and the big performing Fowler flaps and the increased ailerons and increased tail feathers really makes it an interesting slow speed aircraft. It's just built around slow approaches. Yeah, so and, and especially with the uh, shock options, I think you call them, uh, with big tires and huge range shocks and so forth, plus the uh, la leading edge slats, um, you can get in and out of some very short and rough fields with this. It's really to. what we like to say is a stone plane that you can see out of both sides. No offense to some of my best friends that have side-by-side -side seating, <laughs> but I really like to see out of both sides. And it, it, it gives you the performance that you would expect from a higher performing engine. We don't have the torque of the Titan, but we got spin and if we can keep the engine RPM up, that propeller's working hard for us. Now, uh, you've flown both the uh, Titan 180 horse, of course, I know I flew with you in that. You've flown this one as well, I gather. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me a little bit about how you actually feel the difference in flight. There's uh, quite a bit of power difference. If you had, it, this is the 115 uh, turbo, but if you had the 100 horse, uh, that's quite a bit less. Seems like it would lose something somewhere. It's acceleration that you lose. The Titan has torque. It twists that propeller, whether you have our high RPM or not. The Rotex, not so much torque. It's got to, you got to allow the airplane to spin to get the torque. Okay. If you try to add a, pit, a heavier pitch prop, all it'll do is slow the engine down and the torque drops off. Uh -huh. so, so that really wouldn't help then no, to do it's, that. No, it's not help. So you, you keep the RPM up and 
the acceleration when you add power is slower with this because I don't have the torque or the horsepower to push it. Right. But uh, what I lose in takeoff and climb, I gain in landing. I just have less mass arriving at the point. Well, there you go. The other side of the equation then is getting out of a field with lots and lots of power is one thing, but you got to come back and land somewhere. Yes. And if it's back at that same short field, now you'd, be, now you'd rather be in this. And typically with the stow competitions, the, the points are added, both of your takeoff distance and your landing distance. Uh, okay. So we think it's a pretty interesting balance and we want to play with it a while. All right, very cool. When did this model come out following the Outback Shock, which was maybe four years ago or five years ago when that air model came out? About a year, year and a half ago. Okay. Uh, it was announced so at Friedrichshafen, Germany. Quite fresh then. Yeah. Anyway, any differences to the inside of the airplane or, or no, other the, qualities? The, the, the sizes are a little, little smaller, but the inside is still, you know, four port harnesses for everything, well upholstered seat. Uh, this airplane comes rather well equipped in the instrument panel. We've got an engine monitoring system as standard, an attitude indicator system as standard, and radio and transponder. All of that comes ready to fly. And is that your, what you sell here in the U.S.? Yes, is, in the okay. U.S. All right. And, and I should add, there are no kits. Uh, we get many calls for kits, but we, we, we are, we're focused on the ready to fly market. Okay, so ready to fly only at this time. Are you using dealers, Bill? Yes, we have several dealers around the country, and we're looking for new dealers. If you have customer service, which is really what the whole system sure, is based sure. on, uh, I, we're not interested in someone just wants to buy a plane and, and f fly around. I, I, we stock over $300,000 worth of parts. Is that right? Uh, just to make sure our customers are satisfied. Well, that's, a, that's another thing that comes up then with dealers is, well, okay, well, what happens if something breaks or goes wrong or just needs routine maintenance? You've got all the parts in hand? I've got one of these in spare. Is just that right? Standing by. Wow. Okay. So I don't think that part's going to break, but I have another Rotex ready at, at a moment's notice. Well, uh, that's just good customer service, though. For somebody that buys one of these things, they're not going to have a lot of downtime waiting on parts to be shipped We've been in. doing this for 20 years. You think we'll figure it out eventually? Well, eventually you probably will, Bill. So <laughs> <laughs> I think you're doing a good job already. Now, um, this, airplane, this airplane is actually manufactured where, Bill? It's in Czech Republic and Italy. Right now, the Italian uh, department is, is growing, production is increasing, they now have 25, uh, custom, uh, employees. 25 employees there, where previously they only had seven. So uh -huh. they're doing more of the finishing in the Czech Republic. I see, okay. All right. And then uh, you bring them in here, you know, wings off in the usual shipping constraints mm -hmm. and so forth, and uh, reassemble them in, uh, in Arkansas, is that yes. correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. With a little rock. Okay, so. First, let's talk about floats. This airplane looks like it should be on floats. Are you going to do floats for this floats airplane? Floats are an option, and uh, for that, we need have a different uh, setup here. You use a standard cub type gear system and exchange that way the float fittings are at. Uh, uh, as uh, it yeah, is, yeah, yeah, of course, you wouldn't use all of this is, stuff then. The structure is up here for the side shocks, and you can't attach the floats. There's nothing here. So uh -huh. you order it with standard gear, and it comes with that, and then we'll put it on floats because the fl standard gear are the float fitting locations. I see, okay, okay. Well, one of the benefits of being on floats is, well, I guess you could go into some small lakes, but generally, if you're on floats, you got all the runway you always need. It's amazing when I'm on floats, I look around and I see just a lot of landing areas. 60% <laughs> of the earth is water, and that's my runway. That's right. Yeah, something like 50,000 lakes in the United States or something like that compared to 10,000 runways, so yeah. there you go. All and, right, and they so use our new Z floats that we import from Czech Republic also. Okay, and so you're representing the floats that could go on the airplane as yes. well. Where do we find out more from you on the web, Bill? We're available at sportair.aero, A-E-R-O. All right, very good. You can find more about all of the airplanes that or fall under the uh, cap of this gentleman here and other services provided. You do other things besides sell airplanes. Uh, a, lot of that, a lot of things going on there. You can find all of that and much more affordable aviation on bydanjohnson.com.